Good morning, everyone, and may the 4th be with you on Star Wars Day for Tune In Tuesday. Uh, so my name is Matthew Hill, and this is Renee. We're both on the benefits team, and Renee is on the group retirement team here at Uyghurs Financial and Benefits. So we are going to just do a brief little introduction here and some housekeeping, and then we'll get into our special guest, Sara. So I assume everyone has been on 10 million Zoom calls from the last year at or least. so, at least. But feel free to turn your camera on, use the chat. We got it up and running here. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them in uh, or unmute yourself and, and ask if you want. Uh, our goal is to always be around 30 minutes. I may go a little bit over, but usually we're about there at 30 minutes. It's interesting, for 44 years, Star Wars has withstood the test of time, and we have Sara here today who is going to talk to Saskatoon businesses and organizations out there who are looking to withstand the test of time and market themselves, position themselves in a really challenging environment. So one of our goals here at Uyghurs is always to make a difference in people's lives. Um, we can do that financially through financial planning, physically, employee benefits and wellness. And uh, one of our major goals, and you're probably asking why we're doing this topic, is to help make a difference in our community's business lives. And we feel that, especially with everything going on, if there's any information we can use to help our clients or the local business community, for metrics like Andrea last time or Sara this time, uh, anything that uh, we can do to help is good news in our books. So, before we jump to Sara to introduce herself, we have an amazing video that her and her team put together. Um, it's awesome. It fits the theme for Star Wars. And we are just going to cue that up here uh, right away. Help us, Sara, Obi-Wan. You're our only hope. <laughs> Wheelwright honed her skills and talents in many lands. As she traveled, she gathered a band of merry marketers around her, equally passionate and skilled. Her team became a force of marketing, and they are committed to supporting organizations and entrepreneurs, those who need help to scale and grow, and those struggling to survive after a prolonged war against COVID. Rebel deniers regularly strike from hidden bases on social media and lurk online spreading negativity across the marketing landscape. Luckily, science has won its first victories against the evil COVID empire and we can see a new, brighter future ahead. Now, the marketing maverick strikes back. Perfect. I love it. I love that too. So Sara, thank you very much for joining us. So that was a wonderful video, gave a little bit of info, but in your in your own words, introduce yourself. Who are you and what do you what do you do? Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. And thanks for the invite uh, uh, from Uyghurs. It's been uh, uh, looking forward to this and May the 4th. Um, so what do I do? Um, so I, as you probably guessed by this point, if you don't already know me, I'm not your typical Canadian. I'm an immigrant. I moved over here um, in 2006 and um, immersed myself in, in Saskatoon culture and, and was working within the advertising framework, which is my background. And I saw that there was something missing um, for local businesses and, and also felt that we were a little bit behind compared to, um, you know, where I come from in, in the UK. So um, I created Trusted Saskatoon. So that's actually um, 
if, if you're not aware of it, it's a, a local online directory where we have 40 categories and we um, put the businesses through a strict criteria of testing and ongoing um, contracts and, and maintaining standards. And from that, um, I really became close to a lot of our clients and they were coming to us with marketing issues. Um, the marketing landscape has shifted so much in the last 10 years that I've been doing this that it, it's quite staggering, to be honest. And just at that time, people were getting their heads around radio and they're really looking at to what is this internet do? Why should I be using it? Why should I be in social media? So myself and my team, you know, spent a lot of the time telling people the why, and that's really important. Um, I, I think a lot of marketing gurus, um, you know, talk in, talk in marketing speak, and there's a level of understanding that's assumed with small businesses and local businesses. And what we do is we really um, get trusted marketing services, which started in 2014, is we really, uh, make a real effort to speak in real speak. And when my clients and people that I speak to understand why um, with a deep understanding, it's a lot easier to take them down the journey um, of making changes and uh, getting them to follow the, uh, the maverick path um, and become awesome marketers and have the results that they're seeking. So at Trusted Marketing Services, we do everything from uh, social media, website development. Um, we, we do obviously animated videos, uh, full videos, graphic design. Uh, we do everything from political campaigns, um, provincial, as well as federal. Uh, we're actually just doing some stuff for the MAT election right now, um, as well as uh, small businesses, large businesses, nonprofits. Um, some campaigns are very, very local and some campaigns are international. So I love what I do because it's never the same. Um, sometimes, you know, we're running to deadlines and sometimes it's just creating something that's just really long lasting and solid. And it's wonderful to see the effect that we can have on the businesses and taking them from surviving to thriving. And that's really the goal. Well, that's that's fantastic. And again, thanks very much for joining us. So we'll just kind of dive right in with our theme, do or do not, there is no try. Why do businesses <laughs> right now, especially when money's tight, with the pandemic and everything going on, why should they focus on marketing? Okay, so uh, that's interesting because um, this is this is what I'm hearing through through social media and through marketing is money's tight and, and times are tough. Now, don't get me wrong, um, for many businesses out there, that's the case. Um, I would say for my group of clients, and I probably have about 150 to 200 clients on an ongoing basis, I would say probably 5% of them are struggling. Um, they're struggling because they're in those industries, whether it be event based, catering based, um, uh, personal services, restaurants, you know, the food industry, you know, around there, um, you know, and they're struggling just to, 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 to make rent, to, to, to pay their team, to make it through the day. Um, I then have, um, I would say 50% of my clients, because uh, we deal a lot with services and local businesses, uh, having one of the best years they've ever had. Um, after the initial couple of months, you know, they, they where everybody just kind of held their collective breath, um, it, things have taken off, people aren't going to Venice on holiday or Mexico, you know, they're looking at, they're spending a lot of time in the houses and finding things wrong with them that they want to fix. The renovation market has gone crazy, the real estate market has gone crazy. Um, I'm home today and my neighbor's house went up for sale on Sunday, it was sold on Tuesday uh, here in Briarwood. So, you know, I think first of all, it, it, it's challenging that. Um, not everybody's experience is the same in the pandemic. And the thing about marketing is if it's done well, it's not one size fits all. So something that works for me doesn't necessarily work for Uyghurs and something that works for Uyghurs doesn't necessarily work for um, uh, the Rallers, as I'm looking at Brad here. So, you know, I think, you know, the first thing to do is really analyze what the goals are, what the limitations are and um, start there. You know, we always start with the goals and work back. Um, and that's really the way that you should do any smart marketing plan. Why should businesses look at making this a priority now? You know, we, again, Brad, we look and right at you because I'm seeing that smile. <laughs> and that's a yeah. very prominent organization here in YXC. You're working with many not-for-profit as well as profitable businesses. And you know, when we think about why, why now, why is it now that the, you know, you have to make it a priority? 
Well, I think with anything, um, you know, you need to have that consistency. A um, little bit of a side, I've gone on a personal wellness journey this year. I've lost 40 pounds. I've been going to the gym. And marketing is like, is marketing done well is doing consistency, frequency. You've got to make choices on quality. Um, you've got to show up. Um, you know, you, you have to be authentic in, in the mission that you're doing. Um, and I think more than anything, you know, whether, whether you are struggling because you don't know when you're going to be able to operate, you know, at, at full capacity, you know, or whether you are booked up, you know, till November and you can't take any, any um, new clients on board right now, you still should be marketing. Because when you're not marketing, you know, you're, you're eventually going to suffer from that. Um, talking to contractors that I deal with, you know, just letting them know, like, if, if you're silent, you know, for nine months, the funnel that you had, that you were building of clients is going to dissipate. You know, people have very short memories. And unless they've had an experience with you, which is outstanding, they will forget about you because we get thrown, you know, hundreds and hundreds of marketing messages in front of our eyes and our ears every day. When we go to bed at night, our brain and back to the broker area of our brain, its job is to erase things that we don't need and put things that are useful into our long term memory which is why that frequency and consistency in your marketing message is super important. Um, now, perhaps your budget doesn't stretch to TV or radio or, or billboards, you know, and that's where social media comes in, um, you know, that you can do without really putting any budget in and you can, um, you know, just keep that consistent messaging going, whether it be once or twice a week. Um, you know, if you're looking for, if, you, if you're in that situation where you have, you know, a larger budget, you know, again, it's making sure that that what's happening on one side of the of the marketing landscape that you're marketing in matches up with stuff on the other side. Um, one of the mistakes that I often see is that, you know, things are working in different ways, that there doesn't seem to be goals attached. Um, uh, when I think about, you know, issues that I have, it's sometimes where a lot of time the, the person that's doing the marketing, especially in a smaller business, isn't necessarily aware of the goals that are the overriding goals of the business and what the priorities are um, for the business in the future. They don't, they don't get taken into meetings to talk about profit margins on items or services. Um, and they can eventually just start marketing for themselves and they just start putting the same things in front of each other. Um, I had a, a client that was, was saying that he wanted to have this specific service to be something that um, he wanted to prioritize this year. And when I had a look at their social media, it hadn't been mentioned in nine months. So, you know, you, you've got to make sure that the goals of the business are aligning with, with what's coming out of the marketing department, the marketing person and the marketing platforms that you're managing. Consistency and frequency. So, you know, what is too much? What is what are too many reaches? Is is that fair to ask, or is there really no oh, limit? Yeah. To how much exposure oh, uh, people see of you in the uh, marketplace? Uh, I mean, I, th I think from a social media perspective, um, you know, I mean, most businesses, you know, don't need any more than two or three posts a week. Um, you know, unless you have lots and lots of different services, we guess, for example, I mean, you, you, you do a lot of things, you've got um, your benefits, and then you've also got all the products that go with it, you've got um, your insurance, you've got your financial side, so you can touch on those things, you know, um, once every two weeks, so that might be more frequency than somebody has, you know, perhaps, you know, just a just a general um, uh, company that that maybe just two or three things. So I, th I think, first of all, it's looking at the platform. And if your goal is to increase engagement and um, to grow your, your numbers of fans and followers authentically, again, ones that actually, you know, are going to be good for your business and not just 13 year olds, um, you know, you got to think about doing what you're doing and, and, and having that authentic voice that's coming out with that frequency. And if you find that you're losing people, or if you find that you're just talking to yourself, then you need to stop. Um, you know, we, we're, we, we're very, very fortunate um, that we have analytics and data to look at. So we can, we don't have to guess anymore. The, the whole thing of years ago in marketing, when I started, I used to do yellow pages and, and um, you know, all of these things as, as a marketing salesperson. And really people had to believe me as a salesperson that it was working. And um, we were throwing darts in the dark. There was no way to measure um, effectively, apart from relying on the consumer to validate your marketing decisions, which, to be honest, it's not their job. It's not their job to remember where they saw you, they heard you. And quite often what happens is they'll just say the last place or they'll just 
pull something out of the air that doesn't make sense. I can't tell you how many times when I was selling radio that my clients um, were told that they'd seen their ad on TV and they'd never been on TV. So again, it's not the consumer's job to remember what we're doing. If you were doing um, a good marketing strategy with frequency, you're measuring to make sure that it's actually working and in line with your goals and that people are engaging it and you're sending people back to do something. That's another thing that I would say is missing in a lot of marketing is what do you want me to do? Like you're leading me down this path and then you just drop me and I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Send me to the website. Am I going to buy tickets? Am I going to, you know, uh, learn more? Am I, what, what do you want me to do? And I think that's, that's something that really is lacking. And I think people just uh, forget. Uh, and I also think as well is that thanks to social media, it's really got people engaged in marketing hands-on where it used to be a, just a professional thing. Um, but it also means that people think that everyone can do it and that it doesn't really take any thought and expertise. And I think that's where, um, you know, you really have to look at not just the frequency and the effort, because we can all put effort in, but if it's not producing, producing results, then it's a waste of effort. So I think it's just being um, very frank with yourself and uh, making sure that you have that measurability and making sure that you are um, consistent and frequent and, and what makes sense um, with your particular business or your goals. If you're gonna have an event, such as the Rattlers game, you wanna increase that frequency up to the game because you wanna be kind of getting that you know, going and, and kind of really getting people excited. But that doesn't make sense um, to have that level of frequency for a branding message um, that has no, I guess, definitive deadline. In a time, Brad, I'm going to actually reach out to you if you don't mind, where sales fix everything. And you are essentially running an organization very driven by sales and recognition in the, in the overall scope for Saskatoon. What have you found the challenges primarily to be during this tough time? For us, it's a little bit different. I think um, we're kind of in between what Sarah was just saying. So we're sort of, yes, absolutely dependent upon sales, but we're also still very much in the branding mode. I mean, we're still a relatively new organization. So, um, you know, having led the league in sales in year one doesn't really mean a lot when it's still only, you know, 3,500 people or whatever attending your game, um, when, especially when we're stacking up against the rush or the riders or, or even the blades to a, you know, to a, to a lesser extent, I suppose, but um, they all have, you know, multiple thousands of people uh, in there or millions in some cases with the riders um, <clears throat> that identify with their brand buy automatically all these things. So we're really just, you know, really, we're really at the beginning stages of that. To answer your question though, it's been challenging, no doubt about it. Um, the one thing I can say though, is that while ticket sales and things are sort of unknown, um, it seems that our partnerships and sponsors and community partners and stuff have been way more open this year um, to, you know, not necessarily always purchasing or always spending, but at least to having conversations and just being open to these ideas that, um, you know, well, maybe we can't be in person this year, but we can be on broadcast, you know, so those sort of things that were a big challenge last year leading into summer are, are starting to shift this year where more and more, more people have been like, yeah, okay, we've been in this year. So now we understand that, you know, there's nothing we can really do to get around it. So let's discuss and move forward. Awesome. Thank you so much. Brand awareness, Sara, that leads right into what you were going to talk about next. It, it does. I mean, you know, I, uh, loved the first round of the season. I was there at, uh, kind of on the court and, um, you know, they had, uh, they, they knew what they were doing and they have a great uh, media library of, of exciting moments that they can share on an ongoing basis. And I, and that's really the key is just kind of taking back. I, I, I think a lot of us are starting to feel quite sentimental about events. <laughs> I've got, I've got, a, I've got a wardrobe squeaking upstairs with dresses and and, and stuff in that I haven't put on. And what am I going to do? Like put them on and do the housework? I, I, I don't know. So, <laughs> so, so, so there's definitely an opportunity. And, and if I was kind of there, kind of you know, in in the Rattlers camp, I'd be cranking it up right now and just getting people, getting people thinking about how exciting it's going to be and how much fun it's going to be and the noise levels and and all of those things are really taking people on a journey. And and that's you know the best use of 
of marketing and video and media that we have and and they have you know lots of that stuff so I'm really excited for when you know we can get together I'll for sure be getting my season tickets you know and, and going there and uh, uh, and enjoying it and I think that you know just using that um, this opportunity that we have right now where people are just hunkering to get out there so evoke the sentimentality and evoke the passion that was, it is Absolutely. that easily done in marketing? How do you, in a one dimensional screen, as we have now, how do you create that warmth and how do you create that authenticity? Uh, well, if you want to create excitement, you need to stop talking too much. <laughs> which, is, which can be my problem in general because I love to talk um, you know so that's where you're using images and you're using uh, dynamic short videos um, and you're really kind of you know punching in and punching out you know there's nothing worse than having a video that's too long and you're bored by the end of it like you know I, I love reels yeah you know, reels of activity that you know leave you wanting more at the end of it uh, less is definitely more um, when it comes to marketing as a whole. And if you've got seven things to say, well, that's seven posts. So that's seven radio ads. So that's seven billboards. Don't try to push everything in uh, to one message and, you know, lose people because you don't know um, really what's the thing that you have that people want the most. You know, is it is it because you've been in business for X number of years? Is it because they can, you know, they feel I can trust you? Is it the product that you have that nobody else has? Is it the service level? You know, you don't know what it is that, that gets me as your prospect excited the most. So don't assume, don't shove everything down my throat. Make sure that you're touching all of these points on a regular basis. And, and you know, one of the things that I hear a lot, especially when we take over people's marketing, is like, oh, you, you did that post three months ago. Yes, I know that and you know that, but nobody else is watching your feed to make sure. And you also have no idea the first time that somebody finds your business or the first time somebody changes from somebody that you're not interested as a prospect, maybe a student, into a doctor, you know, and then you become an ideal prospect. So you have to make sure that you're not assuming too much with your marketing. You have to make sure that you're explaining who you are on a regular basis. That's where the branding comes in. That's where your story needs to be broken down into pieces and then shared on a regular basis. Again, uh, you know, and this is the difference between marketers and people that don't, is we understand that we're not just speaking um, in a long uh, story. We're going back and doing chapters back, back over again and back again and back again. We're measuring to see which, which areas really have the biggest impact. And then we're honing in on those people. So if you are um, extremely quiet right now, if you're one of the people that still hasn't been able to get back to capacity and you're twiddling your thumbs, waiting for things to open up, what can you be doing to build a library of content and information that you can use when you're too darn busy to do anything? Because now we have scheduling tools that you can utilize. You can, you can set up a year's worth of, of social media um, you can go through and discern and, and, and write blogs and content, which is great because we want to deal with the expert, not the other guy, you know, so use the time that you have um, effectively to create content that's, that's your native content that you've created, pictures of your location, you know, use stock pictures only when necessary, uh, videos that you can put together, you know, you know, in your industry, what's coming down the pipe, you know, so you know, um, whether it's a service industry or anything else, what's happening at those times of year. So you can pre-do all of this content ahead of time and then there's no scrambling. Then it becomes, marketing becomes not a stressful thing that you're under pressure. It becomes this beautiful symphony um, that's working. And if something does come up, you're not under pressure to do stuff because you already have stuff scheduled and you can then take the time to think how you can pivot or respond to that particular thing that comes up that you pot potentially you know, didn't expect or weren't planning for. So for a, you know, say you're a business that doesn't really do anything right now, is there a particular platform you recommend as the first step, like a LinkedIn, a Facebook, like as just the first, if, okay, I only have 20 minutes a week that I'm not on the tools. What can I do during that time to get the most out of it? So, so I, I think depending on whether you are primarily business to business or business to consumer, although saying that Facebook covers everybody, I mean, honestly, um, are, you a, are you a visual um, you know, business that has a visual product, you know, maybe it should be Facebook and Instagram um, or Facebook and LinkedIn, um, you know, so it's really, first of all, discerning, you know, what's the best platforms for you because you don't need to do them all. You don't need to do, I don't do Snapchat, you know, I don't do 
um, you know, some of the um, some of the other platforms with with trusted. We do LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, you know. So so again, first of all, you don't have to do everything. You have to do things well. I also have a team, you know, so it's just you and another person, you know, really make sure that you're doing, you know, that quality over the quantity. Um, if you don't have a blog on your website, assuming you have a website, you should. It's the most important thing that you can have on your website because you're providing updated content, which generally most of us aren't updating our website. We do what we do, right? So you might change your team members. You might add a service, take one away. But generally, um, you know, the blog is where you can share events, news, um, expert tips, um, information on staff, etc. Um, if you don't have a blog, you can use LinkedIn's blog platform um, and you can share your expertise there. So, so again, what's your goals? Is your goals to increase sales? Is your goals for recruitment? Is your goals to sell something, whether it be a product or a service? Is it to, to sell tickets? Is it to get sponsors? Is it to get donations? So first of all, working out what the goal is and then the plan to get there. Excellent. Excellent. That makes a lot of sense. So you kind of recommend to have a goal show up frequency um and measure you said a big one you've mentioned a few times is measure yeah. that's something at Uyghurs a lot in the last year we're getting into really and i see him hanif kind of smirking a little bit is measure <laughs> measure measure so Absolutely. what how, how do you measure that roi on social media that's kind of a difficult um, well, I mean, again, it, it is and it isn't. I mean, if you have a website driven strategy, which uh, anybody that knows me knows that that's my priority because you can measure everything, where people come from, how long they spend there, what pages they look at, uh, what content they like, what content they don't geographically, um, and then combined with the social platforms, you know that their age, their demographics, you know, et cetera. Um, you know, as well, but if you're talking about something and um, then you're hearing it, you know, people are asking for the thing, you know, if it's a thing or there, there's more people, you know, contacting you, um, you know, then you'll be able to measure it that way. If you're not seeing any results, you really need to think about is that thing something people want or are you just not presenting it in a way that's appealing? Um, we have quite a few um, techie sciencey clients and we have to have constant chats with them about, no, you're not trying to sell this to another researcher. You know, scientists aren't your, your market. Um, you need to break it down and you need to speak to people in a way that they can understand, you know, so that's really, really important. Um, you know, measurability uh, is something, again, that we were very fortunate that we have that, that we didn't have 20 years ago. Um, you know, but really it is, you know, if you're doing something um, on a frequent basis with consistency and, and, and you're measuring it to see that people are engaging, eventually it will come. It might not be the first time, it might not be the second time, it might not be the 10th time, but if you keep on with that consistency, as long as you are putting quality at the forefront, you know, you've got good imagery, you've got your, your grammars, you know, on point and we all make errors, that's fine, you know, but you've got to make sure, um, again, that it's relevant um, and that you're driving towards that goal and that you're trying to speak to the right people. Well, wow. If droids could think, there'd be none of us here, would there? <laughs> Sarah, fantastic points today. I could listen to you, as could all of our guests today. Again, thank you, Brad. I know, yeah, there's a note in the chat here. I have to jump for another call. Great work, Sarah. Happy to connect with anybody via LinkedIn as well. Monica, thank you for joining us. Uh, Jaylene from Project Line, thank you. All of you, thank you so much for joining us today. You know, we do have to stick together. And I, you know, Maddie, you would have to say that. Yeah, when you, uh, when you said the biggest problem in this universe is that nobody helps each other. So that was kind of one of our, when we thought of, you know, this Tune In Tuesday series and one of our, one of our goals, even though if it's something that's not directly related to what we do every day, if there's something that we can help our clients, just the general business community out, um, if we can connect them with some experts like Sar, like Andrea, or like Michael from the last few, um, that that is always our goal. So thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Um, Bill, you'll be receiving a feedback form. Uh, let us know your, your thoughts. Answer honestly. We're always looking to improve. And if you enjoyed this, uh, leave us a Google review. We always really appreciate uh, your feedback. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. May the 4th be with you. Be safe. Be happy. Be well. Bye for now. Take care.